Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Order 59 of 2019, appointing the members of the Supreme Council for Women in its seventh session. The appointed SCW's members include Dr. Sheikh Maryam bint Hassan Al Khalifa, Hala Muhammad Jabar Al Ansari, Sheikh Zain bint Khalid Al Khalifa, Sheikh Hassa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa, Dr. Sheikh Rana bint Isa Al Khalifa, Judge Ma'asum Abdul Rasul Isa, Professor Dana Khamis Al Zayani, Brigadier Muna Ali Abdul Rahman. Dr. Sabah al Jnaid, Dr. Suzanne Abbas Muhammad, Dr. Huriya Abbas al Dairi, and Huda Brahim al Shirogi. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Order 60 of 2019, reappointing Hal Muhammad al Ansari as Secretary General of the SCW for a three year term with the rank of Minister. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa visited His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, at the BDF Hospital to be reassured about his health and to congratulate him on the successful medical checkups he underwent. His Majesty expressed deepest congratulations to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister on his good health and wellness, praying to Allah the Almighty to protect him. His Royal Highness expressed sincere thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for his noble feelings and keenness to be reassured about his health. He prayed to Allah the Almighty to bless His Majesty with abundant health. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa expressed condolences during a visit to Abu Dhabi at Mashraf Palace to the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and to the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces, Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, over the passing of the representative of His Highness the President of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Sultan bin Zayed Al Nahyan. His Majesty also expressed condolences to their Highnesses, the brothers and sons of the deceased, to the Nahyan family and to the Emirati people, and prayed that the soul of the deceased will rest in eternal peace. His Majesty hailed the legacy of the deceased through his service to his country and people, which has contributed to the further development and prosperity of the UAE. Their Highnesses, the President of the UAE, the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, and the family of the deceased expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for his noble feelings, which reflect the deep-rooted bilateral ties between the two countries and people. They wished His Majesty good health and prayed for the deceased soul to rest in eternal peace. After that, His Majesty the King departed from the UAE to Bahrain at the forefront of those who bid His Majesty farewell, where Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister of Interior of the UAE, Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the UAE Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamdan Al Nahyan, Bahrain's Ambassador to the UAE, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, along with various personnel from the Embassy. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, issued Edict 26 of 2019 regarding the establishment of a Supreme Committee for Treatment Abroad affiliated to the Supreme Council for Health and include the following bodies. The Ministry of Health, BDF Hospital, King Hamad University Hospital, Medical Services at the Interior Ministry, Health Insurance Fund, Head of the Abroad Treatment Office at the Ministry of Health, Bahrain Oncology Center, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Cardiac Center, and a representative of public hospitals. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, issued Edict 27 of 2019 to establish and form National Committee for the Unified Purchase of Medicine and Medical Supplies. The edict stipulated the committee will be under the Supreme Council of Health and will comprise the representatives, including at least a doctor and pharmacist from the following bodies. The Ministry of Health, the Medical Services at the Ministry of Interior, the National Health Regulatory Authority, the BDF Hospital, King Hamad University Hospital, the Health Insurance Fund, Bahrain Oncology Center, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa Cardiac Center, Public Hospitals, Primary Health Care Centers, and the body responsible for the storage and distribution of medicines. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, sent a cable of congratulations to the Prime Minister of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Sabah, on the formation of a new cabinet. His Royal Highness expressed full support to the Emir of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Sabah, and for his confidence in the Kuwaiti Prime Minister and in his formation of a new cabinet. His Royal Highness expressed pride in the deep rooted bilateral ties and said that he looked forward to further deepening these ties on all levels. His Royal Highness wished His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid success in realizing the aspirations of the Kuwaiti people and wished Kuwait further progress and prosperity.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a cable of congratulations to the Kuwaiti Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Sabah Al Khalid Al Hamad Al Sabah, on being assigned to form a new cabinet. His Royal Highness wished the Kuwaiti Prime Minister success in forming a new cabinet for the best interests of Kuwait and its people. Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, issued Edict 1 of 2019 regarding reappointing Sheikh Maryam bint Hassan Al Khalifa as Vice President of the SCW for a three year term. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa opened the 23rd Arab International Aluminum Conference, Arab Bal 2019, on behalf of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa. The conference, which is titled The Features of the Future of Aluminum Industry in the Arab Region, was attended by the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawziya Zainal, the Chairman of the Shura Council, Saleh Saleh, along with the other senior figures, CEOs of aluminum plants in the region, and business figures. Deputy Premier extended thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for patronizing the event, which reflects His Royal Highness's keenness on the development of this vital economic sector that can be tracked, traced back to the 1960s when they supported the establishment of the first aluminum plant in the Arab Gulf region up to the present moment by hosting the conference in Bahrain for the fifth time. He conveyed the greetings and good wishes of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the participants and organizers of the conference and wished them success in meeting the objectives of the conference which include the exchange of expertise in the field and coordinating the effort of various parties in the industry in order to further develop the industry in the region. He said that the conference represents the most advanced event of its kind in the Middle East and that Bahrain's activity now occupies a prominent place proven by the participation of leading figures from the industry. He added that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, lays great emphasis on developing this, in this industry by making Alba competitive in the world market through the latest upgrades on its industrial output, all of which is intended to enhance the economy and create job opportunities. سبع وثلاثون عام من التعاون المشترك تم تأسيس المؤتمر العربي الدولي للألمنيوم في عام 1983 من قبل المهندس محمد النقي بهدف تعزيز التعاون بين شركات صناعة الألومنيوم في الوطن العربي وإيجاد الحلول في إطار عمل مؤسسي لمختلف تحديات الصناعة على المستويين الإقليمي والدولي ومنذ تدشينه وحتى يومنا هذا تم عقد المؤتمر 23 مرة في دول عربية مختلفة حيث احتضنت مدن كل من مملكة البحرين والمملكة العربية السعودية والإمارات العربية المتحدة ودولة الكويت وغيرها من الدول هذا المؤتمر المهم 
الذي يهدف لتزويد أهم الشخصيات والمؤسسات المؤثرة في صناعة الألومنيوم في الوطن العربي بالمعرفة والأفكار اللازمة لتطوير الصناعة وضمان مستقبل أكثر إشراقا ولذا يحظى عربا سنويا ليس فقط بدعم ورعاية المصاهر والجهات المشاركة بل وباحتضان المجتمع العربي ككل وفي هذا العام تفخر شركة ألومنيوم البحرين ألبا باستضافتها للمؤتمر للمرة الخامسة بإيمان مطلق بدوره في تعزيز صناعة الألومنيوم التي بدأت حكايتها في منطقة الشرق الأوسط مع تأثير تأسيس الشركة رسميا بموجب مرسوم أميري صادر في عام 1968 ومع وضع حجر الأساس لمصهر الشركة من قبل سمو الأمير الراحل الشيخ عيسى بن سلمان آل خليفة طيب الله ثراه في يوم الاثنين الموافق السادس من يناير عام 1969 لتصبح الشركة بذلك أول مصهر للألومنيوم في الشرق الأوسط وأول صناعة غير نفطية في البحرين وبعيد صب أول معدن منصهر للشركة من قبل الأمير الراحل صاحب السمو الشيخ عيسى بن سلمان آل خليفة طيب الله ثراه عند الساعة الحادية عشر والنصف من صباح يوم الثلاثاء الموافق الحادي عشر من مايو عام 1971 تبلورت الرؤية الحكيمة الرامية لتحقيق نقلة نوعية للحياة في مملكة البحرين فبدعم القيادة الرشيدة للمملكة وبجهود صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير خليفة بن سلمان الخليفة رئيس وزراء مملكة البحرين الموقر حفظه الله ورعاه انطلقت الصناعات التحويلية لتعزز من قصة نجاح التي ألهمت دولا عربية عديدة بادرت بدورها لتقوية المساهمة العربية في هذه الصناعة الحيوية وذلك بافتتاح مصهرا تلو الآخر إنه لشرف عظيم لنا جميعا بأن نحظى بمقابلة سمومكم في بلدكم الكريم المعطاء بتوجيهات سامية ورشيدة من سموكم انطلقت فكرة إنشاء صناعة الألمنيوم في دولة وفي دول مجلس التعاون الخليجي من مملكة البحرين الشقيقة ذاك الوقت رؤية ما كانت مصانع في المنطقة وكنا نأمل أن لا نعتمد على مصدر واحد وهو النفط فحاولنا أن نبدأ بالصناعة وشفنا أن صناعة الألمنيوم أقرب لأن تكون موجودة في البحرين وأن تعمل على توظيف المواطنين وتدريبهم على الصناعات المتطورة والمتقدمة فذهبنا حول العالم لنأتي بالشركات والمصادر اللي تصدر لنا الألمنا واتفقنا مع الحكومة هناك وبدأنا هذه المرحلة وشاركنا في ذاك الوقت من شاركنا في قامة المصنع والحمد لله هذا المصنع أدى ما كنا نتمنى ووفر قاعدة أساسية للصناعات في الخليج وفي البحرين طبعا بشكل خاص فبدأنا من ذلك المرحلة من ما كانت عندنا مصانع وكان يقال لنا ذاك الوقت ان النفط راح يقل وانه راح ينضب فعملنا على توفير كل ما ممكن توفيره للصناعات المحليه وخاصه الصناعات الصغيره والالمنيوم تخرج منه مشتقات كثيره وصارت منه صناعات كثيره عندنا في البحرين وادت الى ان انتاجات متعدده منها المشتقات فوالله الحمد يعني نجح وبعدين أقيمت مصانع في دول الخليج مشابهة بسبب الطلب على الألمنيوم في العالم فعملنا والله الحمد والله وفقنا والله أنظر لشعب البحرين شعب معطى وشعب متطور وشعب يريد أن يتعلم تجربتي ويا شعبي ولله الحمد وجدت في كل العمل اللي تتمنى أي بلد في العالم ولله الحمد إلى اليوم التطور في شعبنا وقبوله للعلم والتعليم وشعب طموح ولله الحمد واحنا نريد نخدمه ليؤدي واجبه ويقوم بالطموحات ان شاء الله اللي نتمناها له جميعا. واليوم 
وبفضل كل الجهود الحثيثة تنتج المصاهر المنضوية تحت مظلة عربال أكثر من خمسة ملايين طن متري سنويا من الألومنيوم عالي الجودة محققة الرؤية الحكيمة التي بدأت مع شروق شمس شركة ألومنيوم البحرين التي تعمل على مدار الساعة ودون أي توقف لتنتج ألومنيوم للعالم The chairman of the board of Alba Daid bin Salman bin Daid delivered a statement in which he expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for patronizing the event and for his ongoing support for this industry, all of which contributed in raising Bahrain's profile internationally. The chairman of the event's organizing committee, Mohammed al Naqi, offered a historical background on the conference and said that aluminum production in GCC countries has been driven by a desire to achieve sustainable development in the region. Deputy Premier then opened the exhibition that accompanies the conference and examine the products by the participating companies. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, held a meeting with the Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sergei Lavrov, in line with Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed's visit to Russia. Sheikh Khalid expressed pride in the fraternal ties with Russia and the development they witness in various fields, asserting that the continuous consultation and coordination between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Russian President Vladimir Putin reflects the strength of these relations. He held Russia's vital role in maintaining security and stability in the region to find long-term solutions for its crisis. The Russian Foreign Affairs Minister condemned Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed's visit, asserting Russia's keenness on bolstering cooperation with the kingdom. He noted the kingdom's constructive efforts aimed at establishing security and stability in the region. The two sides also discussed and exchanged views on the means of bolstering cooperation on all levels. Sheikh Khalid also held a press conference with his Russian counterpart in which he affirmed that relations with Russia are taking new dimensions, noting that his visit to Russia reflects the keenness on developing bilateral relations. Sergei Lavrov asserted Russia's keenness on bolstering relations with Bahrain, especially in the cultural, tourism and parliamentary cooperation in the United Nations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the President of the Oriental Studies Institution of the Russian Academy of Sciences in Moscow, Professor Vitaly Nomkin, as part of the official visit of the Minister to Russia. The Minister praised the role of the Academy in enhancing the values of tolerance, coexistence and dialogue among various cultures. He affirmed the Kingdom's keenness to cooperate with the Academy to achieve the desired goals, wishing everyone success. Professor Nomkin praised the bilateral relations, affirming the institution's keenness to enhance the cooperation with Bahrain. The foreign minister held a meeting with researchers and academics to discuss recent developments on the regional and international levels. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with Bishop Nifon Sekali, the Greek Orthodox Patriarch and of an entity talk, all the East upon his official visit to Russia. The minister welcomed the bishop and affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is committed to its policies of constructive communication with the world and takes pride in its role and initiatives that aim to establish co coexistence, dialogue, and mutual respect between people and religions for the importance of these values as essential pillars for the advancement of societies and achieve development and progress. The bishop held Bahrain as a pioneering model of religious diversity and respect for the rights and freedoms, expressing deep appreciation for the great efforts made at both levels.
The president of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Hamid bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated at the margins of the Culture Ministers Forum at the headquarters of the UNESCO in Paris, which was attended by a large number of ministers, cultural figures from over 140 countries, as well as representatives from various international cultural organizations. Sheikh Hamid said that Bahrain is working toward establishing its cultural infrastructure in order to facilitate further achievements and to reinforce its regional and international standing. She affirmed that the the project's location in Muharraq will develop the area surrounding it and will offer opportunities for investment in addition to revitalizing various social and economic practices, including the activity of artisans and traditional trades. A unified framework for counseling services and family awareness has been announced today in Bahrain. The Supreme Council for Women unveiled the details of the blueprint under the theme Strengthening Family Cohesion as a Gateway to Community Stability. The initiative was unveiled amid the UN Women Campaign held annually under the theme 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence, kicking off on the 25th of November to mark the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women and runs until 10th of December. SCW Secretary General Halil Ansari said that the initiative falls under the topic Family Stability, which represents a core component of the National Women Development Plan. It stems from a vision aimed at protecting social security, preserving Bahraini families' rights, ensuring them access to all legal and social services, and reducing the rates of family disputes as part of the efforts to foster family cohesion and support Bahraini women's role. Amman's embassy in the Kingdom of Bahrain held the 49th Omani National Day in the presence of a number of minister, uh, ministers and senior officials. Ambassador Abdullah bin Dwayli expressed good wishes to His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Said, wishing him and his country many happy returns. He praised the numerous achievements of Amman and praised the strong bilateral relations and the strong cooperation in all fields. The ambassador expressed thanks and appreciation to Bahrain's government and people for their active participation in this celebration and also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. In cooperation with the U.S. Embassy, the American Chamber of Commerce, AMCHAM, in Bahrain hosted the fifth annual U.S. Al alumni networking reception to honor the alumni of American universities. More on this report with Habab al -Ghafar. The U.S. Embassy and the American Chamber of Commerce, along with U.S. alumni in Bahrain, celebrate together the unique partnership between Bahrain and the United States in the field of higher education. We've had now decades of uh, Bahrainis studying at colleges and universities in the United States, about 400 to 500 uh, per year this, these years. And cumulatively, it means that we have uh, a, a group of people that are ac working across the society, in government, in uh, business, in culture, and in the arts, in education itself. And this, uh, these partnerships formed through that experience are really essential to the cooperation uh, we enjoy in Bahrain. It's one of those things that brings our two societies together. And what I'm also very pleased to be able to celebrate now is that it's not only uh, about Bahrainis going to the United States and studying in colleges and universities there. We're also bringing the American university experience here to Bahrain. So we're growing partnerships as an example with Royal University for Women with West Virginia University. Ahlia University has a good partnership with George Washington University. And among the sponsors tonight, the Bahrain Institute for Banking and Finance has a very well-developed program with DePaul University to earn a master's degree and the University of Virginia. So we're really using higher education to deepen and broaden the relationship between our two societies. And tonight is about celebrating that. The experience was about learning, but also about understanding the culture, the openness, uh, how easy services were achieved, at the same time how welcoming the people were, and uh, watching the developments that have happened in the U.S. during that time prepared me for how the world was moving ahead in terms of openness, globalization. And I think the, the experience of learning abroad, in addition to actually learning what you can do in your own country, it, it's the cultural exchange that's very important. The event provided an opportunity for U.S. university graduates to reconnect with U.S. alumni community of business leaders who share the unique experience of studying in the United States, bringing their knowledge, skills and visions to benefit Bahrain. 
Around 200 alumni from American universities attended the event. I went to University of Syracuse uh, in a program called Leaders for Democracy Fellowship. It was very informative and fruitful. It's broadened my horizons and become a global citizen. I recommend this program to everyone. It will shape his destiny and become an effective citizen. How can I squeeze in 26 months in a nutshell? It was amazing. It was eye-opening. I learned process and how to respect the process of filmmaking. Like any project that you do, it doesn't start when you get on set. It doesn't start when you get to the actual building it. No, it starts months in advance when everything goes on paper and you're planning. So that's, that's really what I love about it. My teachers were all working in the industry. The annual reception in its fifth edition this year highlights and commends cooperation in the vital field of higher education and its powerful role. It's a great way to develop cross-cultural experience, cross-generational networking, and strengthen the relationship between Bahrain and U.S. peoples. At the U.S. Alumni Networking Reception held every year, we celebrate a wonderful partnership in the field of education between Bahrain and the United States. Hibab Abdul Ghaffar, Bahrain International.